Welcome to another episode of The Last Man Back. Today we are joined by another Sligo Rovers legend who for out on that pitch for over a decade was one of the best centre halves the Sligo Rovers have ever seen. He led the club to league title, FEI Cups, League Cups, Satanta Cups, everything that there was to be won in the Irish game. The one and only Gavin Pearce. Now, as you can see, we've moved inside with the wonderful, uh, the wonderful Sligo weather. It's absolutely hammering down outside. So, poor Gav and myself have got a bit wet already. So, we're going to do the whole lot in the in a place that Gavin knows very well today, the Sligo Rovers changing room. Gavin, thanks very much for coming down today. No problem. And um, just before we get into the whole Sligo Rovers thing and, and where it went, um, you had three years at Blackburn when you were a younger lad. What age were you went over? I think it was 15, 15, 16. Uh, went over there three years, yeah, three years pro. Enjoyed my time there, met some great people, good coaches, and moved on. And we ever, did you get near, was it the first team or was it always the youths? And yeah, uh, my first year I went over and just settling in. Uh, then the second year I went back and in pre season we played a game against the, the reserves and I played really well. And they took me straight down in my second year and I played the whole season in the reserves. And the next, the following year, then, um, Graham Sionis brought me into the first team. Uh, in pre-season, done the whole pre-season with them, played all the pre-season friendlies and then unfortunately he moved on to, uh, to Newcastle and Mark Hughes came in and we didn't fit as okay. what he wanted. Yeah, you see that a lot, managers come in and young lads come on, so you're what age when you came back? You've done a year at Mansfield, is that right? I didn't, I've done six months at Mansfield. Okay. Um, I left Blackburn and went, I was actually training with Bohemians at the time, uh, on the Gareth Farrelly, Gareth Farrelly and yeah. Roddy Collins actually rang me. Um, and where he was at the time, Shamrock Rovers. He was working with been around there. <laughs> yeah, he was working with Shamrock Rovers, and I was told I was going back to uh, to Mansfield. It was Carton Farmer that uh, made contact with me. And I agreed to do. Went over there. I was doing really well. Uh, they put me in. In um, I think it was a month or two in. Said they're doing really well. Championship club up and I said keep doing what you're doing. And you'd be gone. They said don't know how you're not gone already. Um, then again, change the manager. And. I, I just I didn't really enjoy it and on Stevens's day I just rang my dad and said look I don't want to be here anymore I went in the next day and to the manager and said look cancel my contract I'm gone and I'd already booked the boat <laughs> packed my car up and off I went didn't really know what I was going to be doing uh, came home then I had a few phone calls and um, trained with Club and City uh, under David Keely. Okay, yeah. Um, where else? Cork were interested and Waterford. And then Sean Connor contacted me, came up here, had a look. <laughs> he got me to sign that day. <laughs> I just liked it, what I was saying. I just had a good feel about it. It's, it's like any lad coming back from England, there's always a bit of hype about him. You never have a shortage of, of, of clubs to pick from. When you came to Sligo, could you have, could you have seen what was going to happen? And of course, we'll get into. The, the big days that we have, but could you have seen when you came to Sligo first what was ahead of you in the next few years, or no, was it just a matter of getting in and playing football? Yeah, it was. It was uh, I suppose I wanted. I came back not knowing what I was going to be doing, but I didn't really care because that was my decision. And fortunately enough, just came about and just we kicked on from there. Yeah, I came in. I didn't really see. I wasn't thinking too far ahead. I wanted to start so I could get in, do well, and then see what opened up, but. Ended up here for <laughs> 10 or 11 years. You started off in, in around kind of right full, and then um, when you moved into the middle, Shamie Coleman played a bit of right full. What was he like to play with? Could you see what he was going to go on to? No, uh, we, we 
joke about it. Let's be the same as we joke about it. He always said, uh, only for you, I wouldn't have got this meal. <laughs> he said, you used to play centre half and pull back and let me just talk about <laughs> And I said, yeah, you can give me a few quid. <laughs> <laughs> so you couldn't have seen like, kind of what he was going to go on to in terms of at that Irish captain, Everton Premier League. No. Was it a raw sort of talent? Or? You wouldn't. You wouldn't. That, like, mm. you know, Seamus was quiet, a lad, got him out of business, he was a good professional, uh, just, just was just doing what he wanted, the pitching done his business on the pitch, um, but uh, he was just raw when he came in here, um, we played Killy Beggs in the friendly, I think he was signed from then, mm. uh, he didn't really know, because you're concentrating on your own, he didn't really know on the pitch, he um, was a pre-season game, get yourself up for it and stuff like that, you know, he came in, and he was sort of fortunate himself because uh, I think Rob McDonald was releasing him and then he left and Paul came in and I had played a couple of games in centre half because we were struggling in centre half. I played for Sean at the end yeah. of the season with Burns I think um, and in Blackburn I always played, I was a right back, I'm naturally a right back but because I read the game well they put me in centre half and chop and change. But, um, Played here then from the Sean, and then when Cookie came in, he just said he must have spoke to somebody and he said you're going to play centre half, and then changed went in right back and just kicked on from there really. Okay, and you, you mentioned Cookie coming in and something we spoke and then talking to everyone about. What was it that he he brought into into the dressing room? Have you had you heard of Cookie before he came in? No, no. no. I actually know it. I actually went on trial to Burnley. I had a contract offer from Burnley. Yeah. And I trained with Cookie in the first <laughs> time. I didn't know. Like, you were young, but he was getting towards the end of his career. Yeah, yeah. And what was he like? Do you remember much of him? Nah, no, I, I just remember training with the first time. And then when he came in, I was like, who was that for him when he was there? And he was seen to be so close with the players. Like, he all seemed to have a good relationship relationship with him. That's what he does for every goal. He, he, he builds sort of like a family atmosphere. And where with us, it was like to myself, Danny Dyer, Blinks, Keno, and that were at Richie Ryan and Rob in around the same area. And he just used to come over and drop in cups of tea and that. You know, I think he was living in the last yeah. house at one place, putting money in for the, the shop. Dinner party. Yeah. So like, he just makes it a family sort of atmosphere, and it worked. You know, everybody gets on. There wasn't any shortage of fighting. But that's for a good cause, you know. Uh, 2009, um, we got to the final against Sporting Fingal. Obviously, a disappointing day. Um, we won't, we won't like too much on that. Was that a kind of a setup? For what was to come, yeah. did, did you take that? You didn't want to experience that again. It was a bad day. It was it's like the today. coldest day <laughs> in the world. My hand, I had a broken hand. Um, I broke it against Drad here the last game of the season. You were not playing that game though. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> I, I had a cast. See, if you weren't allowed to wear a cast in the game, but okay. what I done was, like, you know, the straps. Mm. I, I got a cast made onto that, and then I had two of them one went out, so we showed the referee the one went out. <laughs> <laughs> and then went in and wrapped it, put it on and wrapped it up so I couldn't see it. So yeah, it was difficult playing with it, but um, then the cold, man, it was, it couldn't, it was freezing. And you know, as you said, we lost in the end, but it did kick us on because I remember afterwards, like, people were just keen over just distraught, you know. Mm. Um, I remember feeling that, looking at him, and then he's blaming himself and stuff like that, and then you're just like, you don't want to feel that again. But, but previously, before that, I was told, to get out of here if I wanted to win something and progress because I was, I was doing so well. I think I got the team of the year and stuff like that. Like, um, and someone in the game said, uh, No names. Yeah, <laughs> I was just trying to understand that again. Yeah. Might have been suspended or something. He said, Look, if you, if you want to win that, you need to get out of here. And I went, No. I said, We'll win something. I can feel it. We're building towards it. And he, 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 put, he says to me all the time now, I said, You were right. You know, so I could, I could see that. We, yeah. I knew we had good players, and no, I was just about to clicking. Then we got into that final loss, and then 2010 then just kicked on. Yeah, 2010, I think, is the day we, we'll all remember. It was, a, it was a great day. I don't think there was anyone left in Sligo. No. It was a massive day. Keno actually wanted me to ask you if you remember who scored the goal in the semi final. He said there was a bit of debate over it. It was me. It was you. <laughs> Jim tried to play me. And I, see, you see me getting up, and I'm like, what's going on? But because I. So I that way, it hit me. And then you see the video, it doesn't even yeah. touch him. Like, yeah. That was a big game for Rovers. Yeah, that, that, I think that kicked him on, didn't it? And I suppose money was as well. Mm. It helped to build what they have here now, stadium, well, the stand, the Astro Tour, new Astro Tour pitches, and stuff like that, you know. 
So going back to the final in 2010, that day at the Aviva, what do you remember about the day and the build up to it? Not much really. Uh, like, see, I'd already played there from the United game, and you know, I suppose being playing in that game and what, what, because whatever happened to me in that game, mm. the mistakes, or the maybe relax a little bit. You had no fear? Yeah, because I've already made the biggest mistake ever. Okay. 50,000 people, so you can't get any worse. <laughs> okay, but if you're going to make it, you made it again. You learn, I'm sure you learned from that, though, wasn't it? Yeah, there? i never done it again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like playing in that game, so? It was weird, um, I like the full stadium, like, when you're on the pitch, it feels like everyone's on top of you. Like, yeah. And like, it just felt weird. And then that sort of, from that game, got me out of that mindset because it was full enough stadium against yeah, Shams in, in, in the final as well. And a little bit nervous, but I just remember uh, it was rooming with, was a room with centre half, Jim, Jim Lockham. Jim. Yeah, room with Jim and then. Um, I think it was Jim, it was either Jim or Keane. And um, just got up, breakfast, went back up, chilled out. See, all I did was lie around and okay, yeah. sleep, whatever. <laughs> and I uh, was just chilling out, went in the bed, had a shower, went into my suit, and off we went. I think we got escorted down, um, got in there, in the RC. Oh, yeah, I made a superstition, and I made a line, my boots out, and <laughs> stuff like that, you know. Went down to the pitch and came in, got ready. The cookie was playing head tennis with Danny and stuff. <laughs> Uh, just everybody just relax. But some people were nervous, some people weren't. Okay, so you reckon that you kind of you got those nerves out of your system, or that mistake probably in the game it was so high profile. But yeah. in, in a sense, was it better to make that mistake in yeah. although it was a League of Ireland select game? It was a friendly. Yeah, friendly. It means nothing. Yeah, FEI yeah. Cup. You're coming into it. It's, it's really going to be remembered. Yeah, yeah no, it, it got everything out of your system. Yeah, playing that game, you know, it was nice to be selected, you know. Uh, Went on. We were doing well, then that mistake happened, you know. So it's, it's a bit of a one of them, like, geez, you were doing really well, and then that, and then seven go in. Like, you know. Was this a real to kind of come up and realize, you know, you're playing against Rooney, and who else is playing that day? I think Michael Owen, Mark Ford, and Mark, uh, it was Rooney, Hernandez, Bearby, Top, and Michael Owen. Who's the toughest? Michael Owen scores, yeah, know. still at the air. Yeah, yeah. Show, but yeah um, but Hernandez's movement in the box was a joke. Yeah. I remember from one of the goals, um, Valencia was running down the line and I had him on it. And when I looked, he went and he just, the ball came, went through someone's leg and just got a toe bump up into the top of the line. <laughs> Where did that come yeah, from? Get me off. <laughs> <laughs> but it was an experience that stunned you. Yeah, it did, yeah, it did. So I uh, think I cleared him off the line in the final. I just missed Trekkie. He, he, he dove past it and I was behind him and I kicked that and he rolled out of the way of it and went down. You know, so yeah, it was good. So if we go on 2011, when we another another day up to Dublin on the on the lash for us anyway, mm -hmm. uh, the Shells final probably the least memorable of the of all the finals. But again, yeah. a win a win is a win, and uh, not as glamorous a game. But what do you remember that one? It was a poor game, that wasn't it? Yeah, we just we, we weren't at it. Mm -hmm. We were passing the ball slow and stuff like that. It wasn't falling for us. They just broke play up and they were up for it. Mm -hmm. But I always knew we, we, we would win because we had the experience of being there before and you could see we were starting to come into it then. Uh, we were lucky as well. Um, <laughs> Clancy got sent off. Yeah. And then we, we needed that, like, you know. And trapped with the penalties again. Yeah, it seems everything sort of goes for us in the final. Yeah, <laughs> apart from the thing goal, yeah. we got that out of the system yeah. early. So we did. So as I said, it wasn't the most glamorous one. Instead of, it was still a cup final. But um, going into the next season, I suppose, as a Rovers fan, we kind of felt that we had the, the cup finals that the big one, the league, the league was coming and then our kinda our world came kinda crashing down a wee bit when we heard about Cookie yeah. Cookie leaving. Where were you when you heard the news or did you did you feel that it was gonna happen? I think we were no there was rumours of him going to St Johnson first. Yeah. Uh, and then he refused that one I think. And then that came up out of nowhere. Um it was, it was no brainer for him to go mm. because he's from there. It was a stepping stone for him to get into where he is now, you know, he's done really well. Um I think we were training. And just came in, announced it, and off he went. That was it. I still speak the cookie. Like, yeah. You know, so. I mean, you all seem to still get on him so well, and yeah. but of course, yeah. Mm. I mean, like you know, he got on well with him. He was like, I suppose, like a father. Yeah. You know, to, to all of us. Yeah. And um, I suppose he actually came in for me to go to Chesterfield. Chesterfield or Ackerman, wasn't it? Chesterfield. Oh, yeah, Ackerman. Yeah, but he said. Have you ever typed it? Chesterfield. He was often. 
the boy out 20 grand and it just got through. Uh, they were trying to get rid of one of the players there or something like that. Okay. And just fell through. But you never know football. Like yeah. You know, um, but that's as far as it got. Uh, but I suppose went on then to win the league, didn't mm. it? So. Would you say your relationship with McGuinness was, was key to winning the league that year? Um, like we had a good partnership. Yeah. But from Jim Lockham, we had a good partnership. True. When I mean, played with Marlon Mayer, we've done well together. Uh, Jamie McKenzie was there. Burnsy, you know, uh, he, he just, it's, it's not getting away from me and Jay had a good partnership even from the very first game we played in a pre-season friendly, I just knew we would get on, we would play well together because, I don't know, it, it was something that happened in the game that you're like, oh yeah, he, he has me back. Clicks. So, yeah, just keep, keep, keep on from there. But Jim, we all ended up laughing with him because he was such a good pro, you know. The season uh, got off to a bit of a, a bit of a disaster. I was in Talca that night, the first game of the season. Yeah. Jay actually scored in the last minute. Oh, yeah. um, I overhead kicked it though. You overhead kicked it though. <laughs> Mark got sent off. Uh, yeah. He got the six game ban. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't exactly a deal with the start. I'm sure Mark was thinking, what am I after taking over here? But he, fairly, he recovered from it. I think it was Cork. Was the, I heard you say the Shells game, there was a Cork game. Yeah. A couple of key games that season that made that, you think that we're going to. That game, just. The last minute goal with 10 men just, uh, just made things say we, we all have each other here. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then it was, it was like for Ian, it was like, we we're going to play for you. Does that make sense? Yeah. We, we fight to the death. Um, and then, yeah, the Cork game. I don't know why, but the Cork away, nil nil, because it was getting to the time where we, I think, Pats were catching us and we needed to keep going. And we just, I think that just, Cork were good at the time, mm-hmm. you know, and it was just one of them games where we needed to grind out results and nil all, but like it was a case where we needed we needed that result at the time, you know. And and that's just for me. Might, someone else might say something different, but I just felt that kind. Of. The the Pats came here. The the sun the sunshine was out that day, unlike today. But that was that was possibly the best game, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It was, it was just a great day in general. But what do you remember of it? Jesus, every emotion. More than you remember every the night, emotion, anyway. Every amount of the week. Yeah. Every emotion gone. Um, started off so well. You had family, friends, everyone here, full stage. There was about six or seven thousand. That was a man. Crazy. Uh, beautiful day. Playing against your nearest royal. You know, if you win, if you win it, you win the league. Um, we hadn't beat them, I don't think, have we? Um, yeah, it was just a great game, wasn't it? Like, yeah. I had everything. I had your goals. Rap. Panos sending off and everything like yeah like in the lead then pulling it back and you're like what's going on even I, I, you look like they were showing the games during the, yeah. the lockdown you're looking back you're kind of just like Jesus do you remember <laughs> many of the games you played in or a bit of a blur do you remember the big ones obviously yeah you just move on to the next one don't you yeah keep going you look back you look you look back you look, you look back at the end with the kids mm. you know, you, me, like me, I just look at some of them sometimes, you know, and um, he just look at them. But during the lockdown, I was looking back at some of the teams we've had, like, and you look back far, like, we even had a good team then, like, like the Faz and all mm-hmm. that, like, that year, like, that was a good team, like, just shows you how strong the league was then, like. And do you think this, the league has maybe gotten a little bit weaker since we've, obviously, done now or not going to say years, weaker, so. because you don't know, like, it's, yeah. you know, I think it's, there's only two strong teams in the mm-hmm. league, you know, uh, Shamrock Rovers and Dundalk at the moment. They've got the likes of I suppose, Bowles and Derry trying to catch them, but everybody else has got to fall in mind, aren't they? Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of, a, and obviously the way everything is now, nobody knows what's going to happen. It's going to hit a lot of clubs financially, yeah, so it'll be interesting to see who comes back strong or weaker. Yeah, the weaker. Uh, to go back on a brighter note, um, another cup final, but just before the start of that season, from chatting to a couple of the lads, is there, there's almost a, a sense of regret among some people in Sligo that we didn't kick on, maybe that we didn't we didn't keep the likes of McGuinness or Quigley or even bring in like for like replacements. Is that just maybe something at the time you didn't think about looking back now? I said it, uh, it actually keeps popping up on my, my feed from memories or something. Uh, I said it, we must hold on to our league title and heroes or whatever that and, um, you could see it because. What disappoints me is we had a team, a good team, and then we lose players like Richie Ryan left, Blinks left, then Jay and Craig are leaving, and you're going to Europe and they're not as strong. Mm. 
I was saying, um, I remember I suppose the best we probably played it was Poltava away in Europe. And then all over there that they were brilliant. <laughs> Uh, that Roman Bezos or something. Yeah. Crying. Jesus, I've chased him all over the <laughs> In Blackpool, I remember him at the time when he came here. Um, when we played him here, so yeah. I came to watch him. There was loads of good books. And I remember watching, you know, playing against England, but he was playing up front, he came on and terrorised the back four. So, not all over there. But it was all you know. Um, but yeah, that's that's just the way things are in this league, isn't it? Yeah. Short, short term contracts, and you don't really progress, I think. You know, it won't be like our sense, but if you look at Shamrock Rovers, the way they're doing it now, like they're going to be miles ahead of everyone, I think, even with the academy structure. Like. Is that because the way that they're kind of maybe treating their players, is there a bit more security? You know, obviously, the, the, the nearly dream for a player in this league now with a two year contract, that they're not asking for well, a lot. But well, I was lucky enough, like I was at Slyo, like I've had two, two year, three year contracts, you know. So okay. They treated me well, I, I performed, you know, so I, I stayed, I wanted, wanted to be here, I was happy. Um, now, Shamrock Rovers are starting to do long-term contracts, the dog are doing long-term contracts, but I think the whole league needs to start trying mm-hmm. to do it, you know, to, to, to progress the league. And then, Sligo, was a, if you look at the Shamrock Rovers um, academy structure, Sligo should be doing it as well, like, to produce more homegrown players. Yeah, and it's a pity as well because I think you look and your testament to this is that and we've spoken about it already on this series, the players that come to Sligo and you know, they play well, it's it's a nice place to live, you know, when you're when you're when you're liked by the fans and it's a nice little town, it's a big football town. I love and it. And yeah. certainly take you into their hearts like yeah. you were you were so highly caught to Sligo and still are like yeah. I've met some some friends for life. Yeah. You know, like I constantly speak to them on the phone, come down that's a sitting there yesterday, you know. So just it's a nice place, you know, yeah. and just see, you just want to see them back at the top again, don't you? Well, you shipped out to Riverstown as well when you, when you came, yeah. I loved it out there. You loved it out there, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was good for the kids, you know, yeah. you know, come this out and get one of the long player. A bit more countryside. Bradley thought he ran the street. <laughs> he probably did. <laughs> uh, back to 2013, so and the highs of the, the draw had a final. What part of the game was it, do you want to remind me, or, or what do you remember? Um, yeah, I remember going one behind. Do you know, actually, I made a tackle for the first goal that they broke from corner, air corner. Yeah. And I was running back and I tried to block the cross and my knee sort of stunned for the whole game. And then in the middle, I thought nothing of it because I made a tackle, just got on Is that adrenaline bringing you through? Probably, yeah. yeah. Um, then obviously, when we get back into it, the, everybody knows the, the controversy. Um, but then, yeah, it was. I think it was after we scored the, to go two and up. Um, we kicked, they kicked off and they put the ball. So I think it fell to Pendergast and he stuck it in behind me then, and I was running back and my Ben shot them. I planted my foot and <laughs> my yeah. knee went one way and my body went the other. I heard it. I heard it. it was the sorest thing ever. Like. So that was obviously before or after you tried to hop into the car. Yeah. <laughs> Nah, what was going through your head, or that? That was Danny North, that was the, the Joey it, flick. It ran on him. just ran out of the corner flag. I've seen it. I, I, was, I was actually <laughs> in the game. I said to myself, if we score, I'm jumping in that car. <laughs> was, was that Unbelievable, you actually had it open. So it was, just, it was strange looking back at it now because I was looking at the footage this morning, actually. It's not too far away from the corner flag. No, uh, FAI like Ford Cup final. Oh, yeah, so that's what it was. Yeah. Was that your favourite cup? Obviously, not the, because of the injury, but. Favourite just, game? Yeah. For Sligo with cups or in the out of the cup finals? Um, no, nah, Shamrock Rovers, I think. The Shamrock, the first one to get a kick yeah. started. Yeah, I think so. Because the crowd, they still still hasn't been beat that crowd, thirty six thousand. Yeah, people. yeah, I think they're gonna do was tickets were reasonable. I think they're yeah, trying to yeah. get a fill. Yeah, yeah. but it's probably Sligo and Shamrock Rovers. Yeah, it was good. Really. So we're gonna have any trouble filling that. Nah, it's not. It was, it was the atmosphere was great. Yeah. After the two thousand and thirteen. Final, I wouldn't say you know a massive decline, but things obviously we, we haven't reached those highs since. And uh, a lot of people would say that getting rid of Barraclough when we did was a massive mistake. Can you tell me your feelings, maybe, and uh, when you heard about Ian leaving and, and how it happened? See, I was injured that year, so like that didn't help things, you know. Mm. They had me there. We won the first 10 games, didn't we? We look, started, well, yeah. Like we were going to win the league again, and yeah. It just fell apart. I, I think they did jump the gun on it, but. That's the decision they made. Mm. They have to stick with it now, don't they? Uh, he's done well for himself now. Getting yeah, and that was just uh, announced today or yesterday, wasn't it? The, yeah. the Northern Irish singer job. It's, 
Can't argue with that, can you? No, no, I hope they do as well. You know? Yeah, yeah, he does. He still likes Frank Sligo, and of course, you win a league and a cup, you're going to be, exactly, yeah. you're going to be remembered. As you look around the dressing room now, is there any kind of memories that come to mind? Alan King was giving you a wave of stick. He was talking about Bach, I used to sit here. He used to be saying, you used to sit over here for training, and you used to sit over here for a match. Yeah, I was over there for training. And, and what yeah. was the thinking behind that? Well, Jersey just put there when I first came in, uh, Dermot, Brannigan. I just sat there. Yeah. Stayed every game. And I, when I first came in, I, I sat up there for training, so I just sat there. Mm. Not mind it, really. Just, just me and be superstitious, probably. Have you seen any players, not even Sligo Rovers, but around your career, that had weird superstitions or anything that you kind of went, what's going on here? Oh, yeah, I had it. I obviously just put my boots there and I touched them. <laughs> touched them? Yeah, put my shin guards on them, touched them. That's weird. I don't know why. I just yeah. I've always done it. I've always. I, more I have the same shin guards years now. Never changed them? No, years. So no. there was no ankle protectors on your own, so uh, we used like, to wear these slip-ons, didn't they? Like cricket pads. Yeah. 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 yeah, I can't remember the, the superstitions. I think most of them are superstitions, but I can't really remember them. Like, um, there was a few fights, all right. <laughs> I remember me and Kano gave me a statement, me and Kano you know, boxed the head out. We were uh, here, Cookie was standing there. <laughs> And it was against Spartan Fingal, uh, he was Martin Grant Crow on corners and we were three one up or three nil up and they he scored two corners uh, in the last few minutes and they nearly scored again and I came in and I had uh, Lucas ahead of me I think. <laughs> I, you know, <laughs> and I squared it in his face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, had an and he got up and he went to throw the arms at me and cut me like, Don't, just down, please, please, down. And then leaving myself and Dan sat together there and we'd drive in together and like at half time, like, punching the coffee over there and he'd be calling me, I won't say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then we'd drive home together. Yeah, it's left in the dressing room. Yeah. It's just you have to have that week to it because it's wanting to win. Mm. It's, it's pushing you through to win, you know. What was um, Joseph like when you arrived? John was grand, eh? He was strange, like. Yeah. <laughs> he comes in, he does all his separate handshakes with different people, and he's John was good crack, nice man, you know. If you ask him that, he'd do that for you, you know. Um, and on the pitch? Yeah, pretty brilliant, you know. You, you know, you give him the body, you know, he's not going to lose it, he's going to keep and stuff like that, and it helps you as a player as well. Yeah, I often I, I said it to Alan that when you were sitting in the crowd, you always got a sense that. Uh, the, the kind of stadium and the team kind of relaxed when Joseph had the ball, and almost like everything was just kind of slowed down. And yeah. In a good way. It's always a good player, yeah. yeah. Um, but so, like, everyone else contributed to it as well. Like, mm. He's just part of that. Part of it. Part of the jigsaw, really. Isn't he? He's a special player. Um, and we all worked around him, and he helped us, and we helped him, you know, so we all won stuff, stuff, stuff like that. It must have been, it must have been great as a centre half to have, so not only Joseph, but just kind of Jordan and, and before that, um, one of my favourite ever over players, Richie Ryan, oh, yeah. played in front of you and I just think, you know, to watch Richie every week was... I used to just get the ball and give it to him and go, die out, <laughs> die out, right, and just put it there. How good was he? Yeah, Play with it, brilliant. unreal. Him and Joe, but Richie's more technical, isn't he, like his passing. Yeah. Joe, Joe understands the game, he's good at getting his body in and stuff like that, you know, he's a different type of player. Um, Richie man, he had that one, the one where he did really his hip operation, the one where he <laughs> around the corner, yeah. and I don't know how he does it, but yeah, that's all I used to literally just, when the ball's coming, like, I'd get the ball, give it to him, and just tell him to put it, I was like his eyes, <laughs> yeah, I just put it there. Then. The year we won the league, um, I know there was a lot of kind of early rumours with, with Mark Quigley, he wasn't in the team, mm. and then Danny obviously got the injury. But um, is there any truth to the fact that you played a massive part, was it yourself, in, in keeping him here? Who? Yeah, Mark Quigley. Quigley, um, yeah. I know all, he got the goal against Derry. Or... We all did. Um, I just, I got, we all got, like, Quigley's is strange as well. <laughs> I think all the good players are strange. Yeah. Um, he, he's always gone home, so that, but you just have to, Put your hammer on because he's that type of player, you know. Mm. I obviously got on well with him. Uh, and I think Jay would have had something to do with keeping him as well. Joey, everybody. I, I liked playing with him because people think Mark is one of his, like, premium dollars. He's a very good player. Um, and I just sort of knew how to get, well, I'm not saying, I think I knew how to get the best out of him. He just encouraged him on the pitch. And 
Well done, Craig. You know, press, press, press it. And he done it, you know. Yeah, he was magic. Yeah. At the end of that season. Yeah, he was. He's brilliant, you know. I love playing him because as a centre half, you get the body. You, know, you can always show us in the feed, you can whip it in, you know, you want to hold on to it, you know. He kind of played that false role, didn't he, where he, yeah. kind of, he dropped off. I heard an interview with him not so long ago. He actually reckons he's fitter now than he was when he when he was here. He probably, probably is. He's flying, he's in his training, he's managing the course up the Sheriff. Sheriff, yeah. Sheriff, yeah. yeah. And he plays a wee bit as well. He's yeah. from around there. Yeah, he's, he's, he's in the gym, I think. A, a bit, a, yeah. He had a back injury. Bad, bad back, yeah, very bad. And he got into the gym then, so. Yeah, no, he's still alright for himself. Hopefully, he has a decent career in culture. Yeah, uh, is that something that you're looking to go into? I know you've started already. You're, you've done your license, haven't you? Yeah, I've done. I have my license in a few years now. And, uh, I think I've done it in 2015. Um, yeah, I have that. I'm working in the FBI and still playing, so enjoying myself really. And is it the coaching you you part which you enjoy? And is it maybe underage or is it more of a senior level you're looking to get involved in coaching with? Uh, yeah, obviously. Aspirations to go on to the coach and manager at mm-hmm. level. Uh, I'm doing the National Academy uh, t- 2007 at the moment with uh, Noel Harrison in, no, in uh, Dublin. Uh, that's it's obviously stopped now, but uh, when that resumes back, we we'll back in there. You know, it's the best kid uh, for that age uh, in the country. You know, so it's nice to coach the best players um, and then. Hopefully, kick on into the, the first team coaching and learn. You, you need to get in and sort of learn under people first and then come from there, put your own stuff on it. Okay, well, there's still life in you, and of course, you're, you're still playing. And just going back to the end of your time at Rover, were you emotional when your time came? And, and when did you know it was, it was time to leave the show? Yeah, it was a tough decision. Um, the year before, there was obviously trouble 2015, so we'd have to not find on my car that. Yeah. Uh, I was a bit disappointed the way things were, you know, the way I was made out to be and stuff like that. But I knew that I just got on the pitch and did my business and not, not that type of person, you know. So it was going to leave then. I was on that contract, I think. Uh, Lindfield came in for me, uh, David Healy. Um, then Minnesota, I went over there, had a, had a look. I picked up an injury, so nothing happened there. Would you like to, to have gone to the States? I'd have loved that, yeah. Really, yeah? Yeah. Uh, then, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that would have been, it was, it was kicking off then. It's okay. Different, it's different, it was freezing there, but snow was up there. <laughs> um, yeah, and then I eventually, it, because we'd done so bad the year before, and the back of my head, I was like, no, I can't leave like that. And then I went back and we finished fifth. And then we said, right, it's time to go now. Um, when uh, they, I was offered a contract uh, to reduce terms, but I said, no, I'm going. Because Liam, Liam Buckley came in to me, or came, was on to me, and I, I agreed with him. Um, I went up there and thought I didn't have the best of uh, best of years there either. But I sort of didn't like football from after that for a period of time. And I've only started to enjoy it since I went up north. So was there just kind of like a little bit of a lull? I think it was. Left? I think it was. Uh, yeah, it was that. But I think it was a lot to do with the injury. Adapting my game because I lost about ten years of pace. Okay. Um, having to change around my whole game style. Uh, then knowing your career sort of coming to the end, not knowing what to do after, and then I suppose now we know I've done my degree. I've done my coaching badges, have a job, so you know that's there, you have a safety net. There was no safety net mm-hmm. then, it's hard to get a bit on the ownership. Um, is that something you'd encourage all the younger players to maybe to do now is education, I, especially the way the league is? I think they should all be doing up until a uh, slug away to now more than here. I looked, uh, you know when you just, I spoke to people up in the college while I was here, and got and never done it while I was here, but um, I've done it now. Yeah, what did you say? I've done a business degree, business management. Okay, and you enjoyed it? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, you, got, you got through it though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I think the results are actually on Wednesday. Happy days. Yeah, so yeah, I've done it. Completely. Yeah, it'd be a good, uh, a good couple of weeks for Piercy, so if, he, uh, if all the exams are passed, it'd be a uh, bit of celebrate. No, I know that. <laughs> yeah, you forget I worked in pub town here for you guys. You're a big Liverpool fan. 30 years waiting. Yeah. And grind me tickets. I mean, I just have to ask it. To be honest, I just don't want to wind the lads up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
and I'll be mates with all my uh, Man United fans as well. They just done my head in over like <laughs> over the years, so I just said, right, you know, like the back end is now. Yeah, you must have been delighted to see it though, didn't I? Ah, it was a long way. It was good. They're, yeah. they're the best team, aren't they? Yeah, they were on right. Yeah, Klopp's yeah. brilliant. He's a brilliant manager, so he deserves it. So just before we finish up, Gavin, with a, a couple of a couple of my mates that were actually two Blackburn fans as well, so they want me to ask you a couple of questions. Then, who was the best player that you played with over at Blackburn? Yeah, uh, of course. Two, uh, two guys was huh. unbelievable. He's a bit like Richie Ryan, that's the way he played, but he was, he was unbelievable. Like he was first oh. pinging balls left, right, and centre, and he, and he smoked as well. As well. <laughs> he used to come in uh, after training and, and he'd be in the side with the chef, outside the door, just smoking away. He'd just smoke with him, <laughs> just shout at people. Like, He's, he's mad. Like, unreal. Yeah. You played with some unreal players though in your own career. You, you mentioned the pre-season friendly earlier on. Yeah, yeah. Um, when I was playing in, in that pre-season, pre-season friendly, I think the team was like, it was myself, Amaru, so uh, Andy Todd or Craig Short, uh, Michael Gray, um, Brad Friedle was in goal. Uh, in front of me was Stephen Reid, then Tugoy and Gary Flickroff were in the middle. Pe- uh, Pedersen on the left and then Dwight York and Andy Cole up front and then Paul Dickoff came on then. You know, Two yeah. treble winners up top. <sighs> Mad like yeah. surreal like I'm I'm there 17, 18 years of age like playing with them like. How did that feel or are you just kind of so confident or so kind of into doing well in the game that you can't really think that these are months? Yeah I, I actually at the game and time I actually set up the two goals for, for Dickoff <laughs> across the from. Um, but it helped having Stephen Reid in front of me. Okay. You know, he was he was good to me over there. Like he looked after me. Okay, so it's going to be it's going to be hard to, to pick just one from the next question because a lot of players that have come to Rovers in the we've pretended the glory years, mm. not, not to phrase it, but some players were here for one year, but two years of it. Some players went and came back, but you were one that came, stayed, and was here for the whole lot. So yeah. if you could pick just one day. Out of or one match out of them all, what would be your, your favorite, favorite memory? Match? Favorite memory. It has to be winning the league here, isn't it? Uh, with everybody here, fans, family. Uh, that that topped it off, isn't it? Like, the, the way we won it, probably the best game anybody's seen here. Like, you claim the assist on that one as well. Did you cross two that? assists. Two assists. <laughs> Corner. Corner. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. up. And then the penal. Penal, yeah. And a cup semi final goal as well to go out of. That's my goal, yeah. Not bad at all. Can't believe they're trying to take me off, can't they? Yeah, it was just Kano. Yeah. My brother actually, uh, <laughs> my brother won money on that. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, he had uh, he had me to score and one else to win one more. That was another miserable day, wasn't it? Was yeah. that that there? The semi finals? Yeah. That was, he had it that day, like. Yeah. yeah. With 100 to 1, I don't think. A few <laughs> pints that night. Yeah. And Gab, thanks very much for coming down and chatting to me. Uh, no I really appreciate it. And best of luck with the coaching. Best of luck with the results on Wednesday and hopefully we'll see you back down here in the future. I'll send uh, the bill into the club, will That Please. <laughs> we can get the heat on next time. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> cheers, Jersey. Yeah. Now, folks, cheers for tuning in to another episode of The Last Man Back with today's guest, Gavin Pearce. Again, like all our episodes, none will be made possible without our sponsors. And today's sponsor was Horns Pharmacy on Castle Street. For over 65 years, they have been a family-run pharmacy in Sligo and now more than ever is the time to shop local with family businesses.